Hi guys, this is Tanoi Sinha, and you are watching a Civ 4 Beyond the Sword playthrough. Civ 4 is one of my favorite games. I've been playing for about two or three years now. And what really strikes me about the game is, no matter who you're watching, or how often you've played the game, or watched other people play, there's almost always something you can learn about the game. There are just so many complex strategic decisions to make, that, and so many people play in so many different ways, that it's really limitless, the number of things that you can learn how to do in this game. So in that spirit, I've decided to make these video walkthroughs. I am an immortal level player. I just got to immortal, and I win about 40% of the time. And on Emperor, I win about 90% of the time. I, it, I slogged my way through the ranks in Civ 4. I started at Noble, and I just lost a lot and read a lot of walkthroughs to get to Immortal. So I think that there's a lot of sort of skills that I've picked up, which will be helpful to a beginner player out there. So if you're watching, hopefully you get something out of this. And also, if you are an elite level player, I hope that you'll critique my play and try to point out things that I'm not doing correctly. Hopefully that'll get me to kick my game up a notch. I won't be playing an entire playthrough in this video. I'll just limit myself to the first 100 turns. For me at least, the first 100 turns was the most pivotal in every game that I had to play. It really sets the stage for how you're going to leverage your civilization into the mid and late game. And it's very difficult to come back from a poor opener. So I think opening strategy is one of the first things you need to understand well if you want to play this game well. So, that said, let's go ahead and get started. I'll be playing on a Pangea map. Most of the skills you need to learn translate pretty well across map scripts. Pangea definitely has an idiosyncratic strategy, but what I wanted to really avoid was an isolated start. I can happen on a continents or fractal map, which is what I normally play, but isolated starts have a really narrow strategy, and I don't want to get involved with that kind of strategy, so we'll just stick with Pangea. All the other variables will be randomized, except for the size, of course, and we'll be playing a random civilization as well. We'll be playing on Emperor difficulty, and let's get started. Hope we draw somebody good. A nice financial, ooh, philosophical and protective. Protective is not a good trait. I believe that it draws a lot of its power from defense and when you're getting attacked. And if you're getting attacked too much in Civilization 4, you're losing. So I don't think it's too good. Philosophical is a great trait, though. It is a trait that normally more advanced players know how to leverage well. And I think really one of the fundamental things that you need to learn that prevents good players from being great players is how to use great people. And there's a few ways that I use great people to make my empire a bit stronger. We'll definitely talk about those, and philosophical will work well. We'll just dovetail very neatly with that kind of strategy. The unique unit is the dog soldier. It's basically an axeman that's a bit worse, does a bit better against melee units, but it doesn't require bronze. Now, that can be really good if you want to be a builder civilization, because you can get a really good force strength defensive unit by researching a good technology, you don't need to get a strategic resource, and so it's great there. However, if you do want to do something like an Axeman Rush, well, you're kind of out of luck because 4 strength is not 5 strength, obviously. The unique building is a totem pole. It's a monument that gives you additional experience points to archery units. It's not good, I think. I usually only build monuments for culture, and I've never really relied on ar my archer units to be heavily upgraded. So I don't usually build totem poles or prioritize them. They do come up every now and then if I want to have a military city that, in building defensive units, it has just, you know, an extra three experience points it can be nice. Um, but it's definitely a niche kind of strategy building. I don't use it too much. Starting technologies are fishing and agriculture. Fishing loses a lot of its usefulness on a Pangea map, obviously, but it's fine otherwise, I think. And agriculture is a fine technology. Um, normally, you start with a farming resource in your Big Fat Cross, so it can be useful. And speak of the devil, we have some rice. Rice is probably one of the worst food resources to start off with, the other one being Plains Cow. At least Plains Cow gives you three hammers to work with. Um, this is just going to be a four food tile, which is not so hot. The game wants us to move to the northeast, and seeing as how I'm not too thrilled about having a non-irrigated rice tile, I'm going to go ahead and move over there and see what they're talking about. 
they probably mean that they want me to be on the coast. I'm judging based on that blue sliver there. And I don't think coastal strategies uh, for your capital are the best. The other thing I'm noticing is that there might be tundra down here. But I'm going to go ahead and take that risk and just hope that they didn't put me near tundra. They usually don't. If they did, then we'll have to work with it. It looks like we have missed out on the pigs by not moving. That's unfortunate. Looks like we only have two hills. Oh, actually, no, we have many more than that. We have four hills, so that's good. And it's likely that we have a strategic resource in our big fat cross because we only have rice and spices. Now, there's only one tile that could have an unrevealed resource, and that's the plain hill. So we might have copper or iron. We might be living the dream. Could be nice. Um, our warriors moved, so let's go ahead and move into some early game strategy concerns. There are four things that I like to have done in the early game. It's usually around turn 50 or 60 I want these things done. Those four things are, first, fundamental worker technologies. Second, getting a defense, getting defense up and running. Third, getting a strategic resource. And fourth, getting some research technologies. The first priority is fundamental work, worker technologies. And that coincides with a worker first opening. Now, a lot of other players, rarely you can go for something other than a worker first strategy, but worker first is almost always superior. The reason is that if you grow, usually you're going to shave three turns off building your worker. But if you build your worker first, he's going to end up improving some land around your capital, and that will make your capital far more productive than waiting um, and, and gaining the three turns on building that worker. It's just going to be a lot more important to have, for example, even a mined hill. So for that reason, we'll be going worker first, and then to make sure that worker has something to do, to do we're going to research fundamental worker technologies. Those are like farming, animal husbandry, to just improve the resources around your capital. You don't necessarily want to research masonry or hunting for sort of camping resources or wonder resources. They're not as important. You can put them off. But agriculture, for sure, you want to have something like that done. That's the first priority. The second priority is defense, and there are four ways to do that. There's bronze working for the axeman, dog soldier in our case. It's animal husbandry for horses, combined with the wheel for chariots. Archery for archers, and masonry for the Great Wall. The Great Wall is a gambit strategy. It basically involves building something that will prevent barbarians from entering your borders. If you do that, you'll get unfettered expansion on your continent. It's fantastic. But the problem is that another civilization can beat you to it. And if you invest 120 hammers into it and you don't get any defense out of it, you could really end up scrambling for defense. Another approach is a bronze working approach, which allows you to build the axemen, in our case a dog soldier. Axemen are probably one of the better units um, on defense and offense. They are the first unit you can really use to attack cities. That doesn't really apply to us because we have the dog soldier. And we'll probably, we'll, we will probably be researching bronze working early just because the dog soldier doesn't require copper, which means that we will have our defense needs taken care of just as soon as we research bronze working. If that weren't the case, then sometimes when you research bronze working, or most of the time, you don't really find copper nearby, so you can't build the axemen. If that would be the case, then we would have to research animal husbandry and combine it with the wheel of chariots. Chariots are a great defensive unit. It has two move, and that basically means you can build fewer chariots and use them to proactively meet threats in your empire. So that's really nice. It's sort of got the similar problem to bronze working in that you don't always reveal horses. If that's the case, you need to go to archery and build some archers. Archers are not a glamorous unit, and it's a dead-end technology, so people tend to skip it on lower difficulties. On emperor and higher, that's not an option. If Barbarians come, they're going to hit you fast and strong, and you got to make sure you have something beyond warriors to dislodge them. Otherwise, you're just going to get run over. So those are the defense considerations you need to make in the early game. The third thing you want to do is get a strategic resource. That's basically horses, copper, or iron. Normally, you're going to reveal at least copper.